Hi, welcome to All Christian Fellowship. We are a caring and equipping church influencing the world of God's love. And one of the best ways to spread God's love is by praying for the coming and establishment of His kingdom. So, this is the ninth video of the series on the Lord's Prayer. And take another look at Jesus' words. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus' special petition, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, is firmly grounded in his life and work. As we know, Jesus was deeply rooted in the hopes of first century Israel. People believed that they were God's true people. This was their vocation. But what will this vocation mean? Well, all the prophets saw Israel's mission in terms of a great buildup of pressure and pain. The night would first get darker, hope would first die, fear would conquer until the morning star would dawn at last. The whole world would enter a period of tribulation, sorrow and anguish, and still the new world would be born in which God's kingdom will come. And His will be done on earth as it has already been done in heaven. As you may know, temptation and trial marked Jesus' entire public life. He went straight off after his baptism to wrestle with the huge implications of his newly, newly confirmed vocation. That wrestling in the desert focused itself on a series of choices which, like all real rejections of real temptation, must have felt terrible and, and painful. But he returned in the power of the Spirit to announce the kingdom. Wherever he went, he was faced with opposition. Sometimes this took the form of tormented souls yelling and raving, and sometimes, well, people criticized and attacked him. True, this vocation is unique to Jesus, I know that, but we are commanded to pray that we may be delivered from the power of evil. And we can pray with confidence precisely because Jesus has met that power and has defeated it once and for all. What then is evil and how are we delivered from it? Three answers are offered to this question, all of which are wrong. The first answer is the head in the sand approach. You can pretend that evil doesn't really exist or that if it does, it really doesn't matter. Yes, people do silly things sometimes, but if we all try a little harder, it will work out all right. Well, that's about as useful as saying when the house is on fire. Yes, it is getting a little warm, but if we all take off a layer of clothing and drink more ice water, things will be just fine. The second answer is to wallow in evil, seeing it all over the place. Once you realize that there is such a thing as radical evil and that it's much more powerful than you are, you either become evil yourself or become paranoid, seeing demons behind every bush. Either way, you are giving in, you are allowing evil to dominate you. And the third answer is that of self-righteousness. When we say, yes, evil is out there, but we are the righteous ones, the holy ones. We are called to leap on our white horses and ride off to do battle with it. But what if self-righteous battles are themselves another manifestation of evil? Think again and you will see that Jesus adopts none of these approaches. No, he doesn't want us to either. Because his way is to recognize the reality and power of evil and to confront it with the reality and power of the kingdom announcement. His way for us, his followers, is that we too recognize evil for what it is and that we learn to pray deliver us from the evil one. 
Now, Jesus intends us to recognize not only the reality of evil, but the reality of his victory over evil. We need to examine both sides of this equation. Because evil is real and powerful. It is not only out there in, in other people, but it is present and active within each of us. Evil is more than the sum total of all impulses and actions. When human beings worship that which is not God, they give authority to forces of destruction and, and hostility. And those forces gain a power that has even been personified in wise people. You see, Satan is not equal and opposite to God, no, but evil is a potent force, opposed to God's good creation and particularly to the human beings whom God wishes to put in authority over his world. But Jesus' victory over evil is also real, is also powerful. It too is not only out there, a fact of history 2,000 years ago, no, it is available here and now for each of us. When human beings turn from idolatry and worship the God they see revealed on Calvary, they are turning from darkness to light, from the strong man to the one who has bound the strong man. So to pray deliver us from the evil one is to inhale the victory of the cross and thereby to hold the line for another moment, for another hour, another day against the forces of destructions within ourselves and the world. Do not forget that on the cross, God has seriously and radically dealt with evil. We are instinctively afraid of facing the evil that still lurks within us. We are perhaps also afraid of the, of the humiliation involved in grasping God's solution to it. Our fear is natural, but fearful or not, this is the route we are called to take. So what might it mean for us today to say, let us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one? Well, it means signing on for a mission. If Jesus straight after his baptism had to go out into the desert to face the whispering and mocking voice of the enemy, why should we suppose we will be spared something similar? If you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for testing. Because the point about Christian faith and commitment is that you hold the faith and stick to the commitment in the face of apparent obstacle and enticements. Thus, we are to become people in whose lives the joy and pain of the whole world meet together once more, so that God's new world may at last come to birth. This will mean different things for each of us, okay, as we each grapple with our own testing and temptation, that's alright. But as we do so, we are brought into something bigger than ourselves. We are part of that great movement in which the hopes and fears of all the years are brought together and addressed by the living God. And as we hear that gentle and powerful address in response to our hopes and to our fears, we are called to become, in our turn, uh, the means whereby that same address goes out to the wider world. You see, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one is part of the prayer for the kingdom. As we pray this prayer, it is our responsibility to hold God's precious world before our gaze, to sum up its uh, often inarticulate cries for help, for, for rescue, for deliverance. We should say, deliver us from the horror of war, deliver us from human folly and the, and the appalling accidents it can produce. God, let us not become a society of rich fortresses and cardboard cities, no. Let us not be engulfed by social violence or by, or by self-righteous reaction. Save us from arrogance, save us from pride and awful things they make people do. The call to pray these words is therefore the call to be Annunciation people. It's called to be Gethsemane people, to be Calvary people. By giving us this prayer, Jesus invites us to walk ahead into the darkness and discover that it too belongs to God.
But once we have entered the dark night, the fact that we have done so with the Lord's Prayer on our lips means that when the darkness breaks, it will be glory itself that awakens the promise that God will triumph over fear, that God will deliver us from evil, and that God will bring in His kingdom at last. And that is why we still say the Lord's Prayer today. That is why we still say, let us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And remember, this is the ninth video in our series of this famous prayer of Jesus. So stay tuned for upcoming videos. Because it is time to pray. It is time to talk to and listen to God. All the best to you and your family. Be in peace. Bye now.